And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for July 19th. Well, we've been away for a day, but still nothing has changed and no storms or anything named is currently active around the world today. We're still stuck at 34 storms so far this year on day 201. Looking at the Atlantic though, there's a 10% chance for an area of interest that we've marked in the main development region on day 49 of Atlantic hurricane season. Not likely to form, but still worth watching out there in the Atlantic Ocean. The Eastern Pacific has three areas of interest and another one near the international date line making four. 50% chance on that main one there, uh, supported by the National Hurricane Center. That 10% to the west extends right over to the international dateline to the, e uh, to the Western Pacific area of interest. is going to be moving pretty quickly. That's why it's a pretty flat oval there moving towards the west. And a 20% chance of development of an area of interest in the southwest Indian Ocean. This one is also being monitored by La Reunion. So looking at the satellite imagery right now then, looking at the Atlantic, this is how it is at the minute. A lot more cloud cover in the Gulf of Mexico today, but elsewhere in the Atlantic it's looking very quiet. Uh, one or two little disturbances down there in the deep tropics and that 10% that we've marked. A little bit hopeful, uh, but it doesn't look like anything is going to come out of those waves down there. And here's the Gulf of Mexico itself. You can see a lot of thunderstorm activity compared to recent days. The Eastern Pacific, you can see all of this hubbub going on. Uh, a few waves moving across there, that 50% that we've marked, that's that one that's just entering the oval now on the right hand side there. Um, might dive south a little bit more before moving northwest and then moving off to the west and some other areas that could develop in the short term as well. So we'll keep an eye on those ones. And in the Western Pacific, this very stretched oval of a 10% area will be entering the picture in around two to five days. Um, so there's nothing on the picture just yet. And further towards the west, you can just about see a little bit of weak rotation near the Philippines from one of the other areas that we've been watching. South Pacific looking fairly quiet, as you'd expect, although not recently because we had eyes on that potential subtropical cyclone. It is still there, but we've now lowered all our chances on that one. And in the Indian Ocean, we have a 20% chance, as you saw earlier. Uh, at the moment, nothing obvious just yet, but we expect that to change in about two days' time. Sea surface temperatures then continuing to warm a little bit more in the eastern Pacific and you can see warm waters from the west pack stretching towards Hawaii now as well 26 degrees over the islands and all the way to Mexico uh, obviously there's still cooler waters in the equatorial zone the Atlantic the Gulf of Mexico still getting warmer again 30 degrees Celsius maybe 31 near the Florida Keys and maybe pushing 32 near the Bahamas and also the southern coast of Cuba so very warm waters in the in the Caribbean uh, the Gulf of Mexico and the Gulf Stream so those are the areas really to watch amongst many others this season in the Atlantic. The Indian Ocean still staying fairly warm in general. The uh, Bay of Bengal, one of the long range models suggesting there could be something next week over there and in the Western Pacific you can see those sea surface temperatures again generally what the same as what they've always been. Uh, you can see 28 degrees Celsius water stretching almost up to the Japanese island of Kyushu. Uh, but out to sea there, the 26 degree waters quite easily sustained. And these are the sea surface temperature anomalies. You can see the highest anomaly of the Western Pacific just off Palawan in the Philippines along with the Gulf of Tonkin. And in the Atlantic, uh, the hottest spots there would appear to be off the coast of the Carolinas and also in the main development region in terms of the what you would call the typical tropical zones amongst other areas further north. Well, on July 19th, 1994, we had a very busy day, uh, polar opposite to what we're seeing today. Uh, Hurricane Amelia was peaking as a Category 5 pictured, along with Tropical Storm Fabio, and in the Western Pacific, four tropical cyclones, although the tropical depression to the west there, I think, was only recognized by the Chinese. It wasn't a JTWC depression at any rate. We also had Tropical Storms Yunya and Zeik out over there in the Western Pacific, and we had Typhoon Walt peaking as a super typhoon with winds of 150 miles per hour. So we're back in 2020, the next name on the Atlantic naming list is Gonzalo, followed by Hannah. 
in the Eastern Pacific were still waiting for Douglas, followed by Elida. And in the Central Pacific, the next name on list one is Hone. We could theoretically get all three of those next names this week, but unlikely. Western Pacific, the next name is Sinlaku, followed by Hagapit. And in the North Indian Ocean, the next name on list one is Gatti. Looking into the Southern Hemisphere, because you never know with that 20% system, the first names in the Southwest Indian Ocean this season will be Alicia and Bongoyo. The next name in Australia is Imogen, and in the Southern Hemisphere, in the Southern Pacific rather, it's Yolanda. That's all for now. We'll be back with another Tropical Weather Bulletin on Monday night. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an Ultimate Fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force 13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month, You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.